So now after looking at continuous probability functions, now let's look at the um, normal distribution. Now we've seen this one, you've probably seen this many times long even before this course, and that's your um, continuous distribution function that's shaped like a bell curve, meaning um, it's peaked in the middle and then you kind of have long tails on the left side and the right side looking like that and as we already have calculated we know how to calculate the mean we know how to calculate the standard deviation we know how to use SPSS to calculate those things to be able to get some sense of what is the dispersion how what does the distribution look like Um, sometimes we have long tails on one side or the other, but for the most part, um, a calculation of the mean and the standard deviation is going to be good enough for you to be able to calculate um, any of the probabilities. I'm not sure why you would care what the history is of this. So in terms of um, what do we do with this? One useful thing to be able to do would be to be able to calculate what are called z-scores. And z-scores are actually um, calculated using the standard deviation um, information. Um, the example given here is if the mean of the normal distribution is 5 and the standard deviation is 2, the value, the z-score is 11. Um, um, sorry, the value of 11 is the three standard deviations above or below um, that item, that mean, um, the z-score being three, um, being three standard deviations away. Um, the z-score itself helps us in understanding what the distribution looks like for each value minus, um, in this case, um, the mean score time, um, divided by the standard deviation. Um, and so there will be some problems where you have to calculate standard deviations and um, that you're given the z-scores. Now in general, what we see as the distribution of the data for a normal distribution is that about 68% of the values lie within one standard deviation, either plus or minus, from the mean. That within two standard deviations of the mean, we have about 95% of the values. And that when we expanded out the three, per three standard deviations on either side, we get um, 99.7 percent of the um, values which as it notes mid translate into the fact that almost all values are within three standard deviations of the mean if it is normally distributed and you can see I'm not going to walk you through I'm assuming you can all read slides here I'm not going to walk you through this here, but this would be one way that we could use it. If we knew that the mean was 50 and the standard deviation was 6, we know that everything should be within plus or minus 18 um, of 50 to be able to cover um, most of the values. You're not going to have to do anything again on the calculator. So really what you're going to be using here is you're going to be using, going back to um, the web, I think you can just do it with the stat.berkeley.edu calculator and be able to um, type in your mean score, your standard deviation score, and you'll be able to calculate probabilities of certain things. Okay, I think that's it. Again, a rather short 
video. Um, these two are, are rather short, um, and so generally textbook authors just put them all together um, because they do follow pretty quickly. Uh, things are going to get a bit more complicated here, so I would encourage you to work through modules 5 and 6 as quickly as possible so that you can move on to the more difficult lectures coming up.